stop Mr. Trump or anyone else from doing bad things. Bush left office, but that is true. 
there is another reality. And that is that all across this country, there are millions and millions of decent, good people who are frightened about the world that they are living in. There are mothers out there, single moms or young couples, who are making $30,000, $50,000 a year. Mom and dad are working. They need child care for their children, and yet child care costs ten dollars or $15,000. How do you afford $15,000 for child care when you're making $40,000 or $50,000 a year? There are workers in my state who see an explosion in technology. They see the very wealthiest people in this country becoming phenomenally richer. They see large corporations enjoying record-breaking profits. And yet they are working not at one job, they're working at two jobs, they are working at three jobs. There are people all over this country who are 55, 60 years of age. They have worked their entire lives. And now they are going to be retiring soon. And you know what? Half of those older workers do not have a nickel in the bank for retirement. There are young people who went deeply into debt, 30, 50, 80 thousand dollars in debt in order to go to college. But when they leave school, they find that the only jobs they can get are jobs which pay them 12, 14 bucks an hour, not enough to repay their debt. That is the reality for millions of people in this country. And that is the reality of a middle class which has been in decline for the last 40 years. That is the reality of 43 million fellow Americans who today are living in poverty, something that we do not talk about at all, not mentioned on television, and some in dire poverty. We are living in a nation which has a grotesque level of income and wealth inequality in which the top one-tenth of one percent now owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. And that is the reality that Mr. Trump perceived to be true. And he said, I hear you are hurting. And I hear and understand you're worried about the future for your kids. And I alone can do something about it. And people voted for you. Now let me just tell you some of what Mr. Trump talked about. And we're going to hold them accountable. Mr. Trump said, and Mr. Trump said, unlike many Republicans, the vast majority of Republicans, he said, we, he will not cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Now, I believe we should expand Social Security. I believe that a Medicare for all program, but that is what he said. And pay attention to see what he now does. The question that will be resolved pretty quickly is whether or not everything that he was saying to the working families of this country was hypocrisy, was dishonest, or whether he was sincere. And we will find that out soon enough. But number one, no cuts, says Mr. Trump, to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Mr. Trump says he wants to invest a trillion dollars in rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. That is a good sum of money. That is exactly what we should be doing. And we can create millions of good paying jobs if we do that. Mr. Trump, that's what you said on the campaign trail. That's what we look forward to seeing from you. I happen to believe that the federal minimum wage of seven and a quarter today is a starvation wage, that it should be raised to $15 an hour, a living wage. But what he did say is we should raise the minimum wage to 10 bucks an hour. Not enough, but a start. And we will hold him to those words. Mr. Trump said 
of Wall Street, dangerous, doing bad things. He wants to reestablish last legal legislation. I look forward to working with him.
will be far less healthy and habitable than the one that we have today. And this is an issue in which millions of Americans and people all over the world, not an American issue, this is a global issue because if the United States backs down and gives up on the effort to combat climate change all over the world, China, Russia, India, other countries are going to say, why are we doing it? Why are we transforming our energy systems? Look at America, they're not doing it. So millions of us have got to stand up and tell Mr. Trump to read a little bit about science. <laughs> of the fossil fuel. Well, let me just, uh, before UJ comes out, let me just read a few words, a couple of pages, uh, <laughs> in order to get the discussion going uh, from the very beginning, the introduction to the book. This is what I wrote. When we began our race for the presidency in April 2015, we were considered by the political establishment and the media to be a fringe campaign, something not to be taken seriously. After all, I was a senator from a small state with very little name recognition. Our campaign had no money, no political organization, and we were taking on the entire Democratic Party establishment. And by the way, we were also running against the most powerful political operation in the country. The Clinton machine had won the presidency to Bill Clinton twice and almost won the Democratic presidential nomination for Hillary Clinton in 2008. When our campaign finally came to a close in July 2016, it turned out that the pundits had got it wrong, big time. We had made history and won one of the most consequential campaigns in the modern history of the country. A campaign that would, in a very profound way, change America. We received more than 13 million votes in primaries and caucuses throughout the country. We won 22 states, more than a few by landslide proportions. We won 1,846 pledge delegates of the Democratic Convention, 46% of the total. Importantly, in virtually every state, we won a strong majority of younger people, the future of America. We won large percentages of the vote from white, black, Latino, Asian American, and Native American youth. We set the agenda for the America of tomorrow. Thank you.